Hello again everyone, Dr. Joel Schwartz here. This is video two in our series of five videos on stress. In our first video we talked about the many different types of ways that stress can affect your health. And in this video we're going to talk about the actual physiology of stress. More specifically we're going to talk about how your brain creates chemical messengers called hormones that have many effects and many of those are negative effects on your health. In this video, we're going to talk about the physiological response to stress. Here are some of the common initiators of the stress response. I'll give you a few moments to look at the list. There are many reasons for initiation of the stress response. Besides the psychological and psychosocial ones like work, family, and deadlines, please realize that there are other initiators of stress such as blood sugar problems, pain, nutritional deficiencies, illness, and inflammation. All of these are important and contribute to your overall response to stress. For example, suppose you have a very stressful work or financial situation and a challenging family life. If you add a poor diet on top of that, it will make the situation much worse. Therefore, besides just learning to relax, it is important to treat your diet and do other things, such as take the right nutritional supplements to reduce your stress. We need all the help we can get. Besides that, the best treatment always targets all the causative factors. Now let's talk about what happens physiologically to convert those thoughts and emotions into a stress response. There is an area of your brain which is called the hypothalamus. This area is a large receptive area. A funnel is a good analogy for all the emotional aspects of stress. From here the brain turns these into electrical and chemical signals which generate hormones to help your body adapt to stress. These stress hormones come from the adrenal glands which sit on top of your kidneys. The specific hormones are epinephrine and norepinephrine, which control your immediate reaction to stress, and cortisol, which controls your long-term reaction to stress. These are not the only stress hormones, but they are the most important ones, so they're the ones I'll be focusing on in this presentation. These stress hormones prepare your body for a challenge in a number of ways. Here's a little more detailed look at what happens to your brain and hormones during stress. As I said before, the hypothalamus is an area of the brain that acts like a large funnel. All types of stress, mental, emotional, and physical, stimulate the hypothalamus. From there, hormonal messages are sent to the pituitary gland in the brain and then to the adrenal glands where epinephrine, norepinephrine, and cortisol are released. That's the stress response in a nutshell. Here you see the pathway for the production of steroid hormones, including cortisol, DHEA, testosterone, and the estrogens. Notice that they all come from cholesterol and from pregnenolone. When your body goes into a long-term stress response, it will make lots of cortisol, but less of other hormones that perform essential body functions. These other hormones are DHEA and the sex hormones testosterone and estrogen. This is called a pregnenolone steel and is indicated by the circle showing that the production of cortisol is favored over the other hormones. When this happens, your health suffers. With treatment, in addition to getting your cortisol levels under control, it may be necessary to do things to build up these other hormones. I'm not talking about hormone replacement therapy. There are other ways to get these hormone levels up. Now I want to talk about two important additional points regarding the stress response. Interestingly, the body responds exactly the same to a real danger, like the impending attack from a mugger, as it does to a perceived stress, such as concerns about other people judging you. Because of the greatly accelerated pace and technological basis of our society, there's an extreme amount of psychosocial stress. Some of this is real, but a lot of it is perceived, and many of our worries will never manifest as reality. Unfortunately, this perceived stress affects our body in a very negative way. 
The second point has to do with prolonged stress. Please understand that cortisol is a very important hormone and the stress response is normal. A good analogy is what happens when a zebra is being attacked by a lion. This is illustrated here. This is a short-term event where cortisol will increase greatly and help the zebra mobilize all her resources to evade the lion. After she has evaded the lion, the cortisol level drops and her physiology returns to normal. This is a healthy and normal stress response. Sometimes we as humans encounter these fight or flight types of situations where it is important for us to flee or defend ourselves, such as from an attacker. In this case, cortisol levels will increase and provide the necessary physiology for us to flee or fight. The problem occurs with our modern lifestyles where we encounter different types of stress from that seen on the previous slide. These types of stress are more of a psychosocial nature due to things like money, relationships, work, or as pictured above, a traffic jam. These types of stress initiate the same response that occurs when we are attacked, but the stress does not dissipate. This type of prolonged stress leads to prolonged high cortisol levels and this damages our health. In our modern society, prolonged stress is not going to go away. Our increasing use of technology and the rapid speed of our lives are not going to slow down. What's important to keep in mind is that we can learn to modulate our physiological response to this ongoing stress. Or put another way, if we don't learn to modulate our physiological response, we're going to end up with a lot of health problems. In review, the two main additional points are that in our modern society, we have a high level of psychosocial stress, some of which is perceived and some of which is real. We respond to the perceived stress the same as we do to the real stress. Secondly, stress is prolonged. Both of these cause severe negative effects on our bodies. By the way, we discussed most of these effects in the previous video, part one, so please view that if you haven't already done so. So that's your introduction to the physiology of stress. Please think about this information and how it might apply to your life. Also, please watch our other videos on stress. If you watch all of them, you'll get a complete picture of what stress means to your health. You'll also find out how we diagnose stress and what we do to treat stress. It's a good idea to watch the videos in the order listed above. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or would like to make an appointment, our contact information follows this slide.